All right. Cooperative Legacy Project interview number 65, March 9th, 2007. We're visiting with Gene Dragseth, former cooperative manager at Nunda, South Dakota. That's right. Gene, where and when were you born? I was born in 1941 in Madison. My home far, uh, my home place is right south of town here in Nunda, about five miles. Okay. Where was your... Uh, your family originally from? Within, right in, within two, three miles from there. Okay. They're all, the home, Dragseth Farm is right south of town here, about four miles. Mm -hmm. And Dragseth sounds Scandinavian, maybe? Norwegian. Norwegian, that's what I would have thought. Um, you have brothers and sisters? I got one brother and one sister. Okay, where are they at now? My brother, he's a controller with Senex up at Ortonville, Minnesota. Okay. With uh, his uh, offices in Clinton. And my sister, she teaches school in Coleman, and she lives in Madison. Okay. What was your father's name? Elmer. You want to talk about him a little bit. What sort of a guy was he? Well, Dad was always on the farm, you know. Him and his brothers, they, a lot of them, they farmed together. I mean, they done work together. They had their own land. Mm -hmm. And uh, very, very religious. Dad was when he was, mm -hmm. and uh, in fact, our home church was in our same section, Lake Madison Lutheran Church. So mm -hmm. uh, he was growing up that way, and was, there was eleven, thirteen, eleven, eleven of them that was in his family. Oh, eleven families children. used to be bigger. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, a lot of a lot of work kit for the kids on the farm. Yeah. Dad retired in the, well, let's see, it'd be the late 70s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was your uh, mother's name? Emma. Emma Salen, she was, until she married Dad. And mm -hmm. She, uh, in fact, her home place is a mile and a half south of Nunda here, so mm -hmm. they grew up pretty close together. So. Mm -hmm. What sort of person was she? She was very nice. She she never started, she taught school before she started having kids, and then she went till all the kids were out of high school, and then she started teaching again, and she taught up to her retirement age. Okay. At, you... at Rutland is where she ended up the last 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. she... Started in country school? Yep, or... yep. She had all country schools, and then she was teacher at the Washington School out about five miles east of Nunda here. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, she was there, I think, probably two years, and then she got into Rutland, and and from their farm was only about three and a half miles. So that, mm -hmm. sure, and it was in the grade school she taught. So yeah, yeah. Um, what are some of your uh, early memories on the farm? In the, in the well, maybe starting maybe in the mid to late forties when in the late yeah. It was, I started driving a tractor when I was awful young. Mm -hmm. I think I was hauled grain to town here up in London when I was 10 years old. Mom didn't like it, but Dad and them, and, and we had an H farm all, and I remember one thing that I come up here, and I, I must have fell asleep here about a mile or a half mile west of London here and a little south, and down the ditch I went and rolled the tractor, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I landed over in the road, thank goodness. Nobody was hurt, but that was one of them. And then I used to I used to be out in the field all the time. I when I started when I was about seven, Dad bought me a little beef armel, and I drove that. And then we had a cultivator on it, and I was out cultivating when I was eight and nine years old. Mm -hmm. Did the you, you mentioned the tractor accident? Did you have some sort of a, a safety? Guard or something? No, like no, no, no. It was an old H farm and yeah, they didn't do anything back in the no. days. No, and then I always had to have, have top speed on it, you know. So that <laughs> kind of cured me of that, you know. And them old H farm they'd move pretty fast. Yes, yes, yes. Um, how was life on the farm in those days? A lot different than today, probably. Oh, by far. Yeah, yeah. Dad, he only farmed uh, about four quarters. That's all he ever farmed. Mm -hmm. And then it was old H and M's and 560. When he got a 560, he thought he had quite a tractor, you know. That was the last one he ended up with. So things have changed a lot from then, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, when you were young, what did you want to do? Did you want to farm? Yes, I did. 
obviously you like the tractor a lot so oh yeah dad always when i graduated from high school i uh joined the national guards well i was in the guards during this junior senior year i guess then i'd go to fort leonard wood for six months and then i'd come back and dad says ah uh, he says i think you better he didn't think you know that he had enough to do and he, he at that time dad didn't think farming was that great and farming mm -hmm. was pretty good in those years really but so anyway then i was when i come out of guards i got married and and this job come up here in Nundit Senex, so mm -hmm. that's where I started. Okay. Well, we're probably going to back off a little bit from that point. Okay. Um, where did you go to school at? I went to school at Rutland. Okay. Did you, you didn't go to country school at all? No, nope, no. Nope. I went right all town. 12 years at Rutland. Okay. What was that like? Rutland was a nice school, you know. It, mm -hmm. it was, I think, when we were there, it was around a couple hundred kids. Now they got a little over a hundred, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, had the school buses, you know. And our driveway was about a half a mile, not a half mile, quarter of a mile long, you know. So mm -hmm. we always had kind of a long walk. And then when we got in high school, we always drove. So yeah, yeah. yeah. What was high school like? We had a lot of fun in high school. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell me about some uh, of the fun? Oh, man. I wouldn't dare tell about all the fun <laughs> no. we had. No, we did. We had, uh, I was played basketball, football. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we had a good class. I think we had about 18 or 19 in our class. Mm -hmm. So. Pretty good sized class. Yeah, it was. Yep. Um. Where did you, what's your wife say? Kathy. Mm -hmm. And where, when did you meet her? Oh, I started going with her when I was probably junior, oh no, I was probably a freshman in high school. Really? Sophomore, okay. yeah. All right. Um, how long have you been married then? 47 years. Okay. So you must have been, what, about 19? I was 18 when 18 I got married, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, did you serve in the military? Just the six months of, the six months of, of the guards. Uh, guards. And, and then was, I was in there for about, what, three, four years after that, you know, for yeah. guard camps. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just prior to Vietnam. Right. And, yeah. uh, but not close enough so that they were taking guards no, no. like they do today. No, we got out of that. Right. Um, okay. Um, you have kids. I, I have four. I know you have some. Yeah, I have four children. The two oldest are boys, and the two youngest are girls. Mm -hmm. Where are they all? Well, Jeff, he's out at uh, Sturgis, between Sturgis and Deadwood is where he lives. He's the manager out there, of Sturgis Union Center, Rap and Rapid City's got, and uh, Hot, no, Belfuge and Union Center. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. So he's got a pretty big co-op out there. Yeah, yeah. And the rest of them? Terry, he's at Mitchell, and uh, he works at Howard here at uh, that rapid place. He's in the office there, and his wife's bookkeeper at the lawyer's office. Yep. Yeah. And your daughters? My o my oldest daughter, she lives just a mile and a half south of town here. Mm -hmm. Him and... Uh, Married to Lauren Olson, and they they farm, you know, quite a bit. Him and his brother together, they got quite a few acres of land. Mm -hmm. And the youngest one, Jamie, she's a speech therapist at uh, Brandon. They live in Sioux Falls with her husband Chad, and he teaches also. So. Okay. Okay. We have ten grandchildren. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh. You mentioned the, the son out at uh, Jeff out at uh, Union Center in Sturgis. Is is, is there a, a, a do you know is that a very common thing to have uh, fathers and sons both ended up in the in co-op management? I don't know. <laughs> Jeff's been in it quite a while. When he worked for Senex before that up in North Dakota, didn't he? Oh yeah, Jeff. He started. He worked for me down here. You know, when he was in high school in the summer months. You know, and then then when he got gone, then he went to. Uh, Beersford, and he worked down there. 
mm-hmm. after he went to college. And he worked there uh, down at uh, the co-op down there. And then he went to Baltic, and he ran that station, the Farmers Union, at Baltic for mm-hmm. okay. a year. I don't remember how long for sure. Mm-hmm. And then he went to a... Then he got married, and his wife teaches... is a professor up at... Uh, Dickinson, North Dakota, mm-hmm. at the state college there. Mm-hmm. So then he left his job, went up there, and then he got in with Cynics, and he was a field rep for them for on petroleum and that mm-hmm. for about six, seven years, probably more than that, probably. And then he got that job down at Sturgis, and and uh, so he ended up down there. And his wife still teaches up in uh, Dickinson, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. she uh, just drives up there and. She, from Monday through Thursday, and then she comes back. Yeah, she's uh, Ben Radcliffe's granddaughter. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, how did you get involved with cooperatives? Well, I guess really when I got involved, you know, when I was a kid, Dad would always go to Farmers Union meetings, you know, mm-hmm. Dad and Mom that had those week uh, monthly meetings, you know. Sure. When I was a kid, I'd go along with them. Mm-hmm. And Dad always bought from the Farmers Union, the co-op up here, mm-hmm. all this petroleum and that. Then when they come, they needed a... When I was down in Fort Le- Leonard Wood, the opening come up as a... They needed a truck driver for a petroleum truck. Mm-hmm. So Dad called me and asked if I'd be interested in it. So I applied and I got it because I was getting out within two, three weeks of that. So sure. that I guess that's where I got really got started. For, mm-hmm. So I drove the truck a couple of years. Yeah, this has this been a pretty strong co-op area around here? This has been a very strong co-op area, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Did, uh, did you know Emo Lorex over at the Old Dam? Oh, yes, I knew Emo. Yeah, I knew a lot of the old timers. You know, some of them. And there's yeah. some of them I can't remember their names anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, what did you all like about cooperatives? Well, I would guess I always had a very good uh, board of directors to work with when I got manager. I mm-hmm. I started managing when I was 22 years old, and uh, I always had a very good. Board members had good patrons, mm-hmm. and I just I always like to sell, and that's just that's what we done. Okay. And um, let's see. Sometimes people answer more than one question. Oh, so I'm sorry about that. Along. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, what was it like managing back in those days? What year did you start that? I started managing. In 1963. 1963. Yep. And I started driving truck in 1960. So. Okay. What was managing the co-op like back in those early day, earlier days for you, anyhow? Well, the board offered me the job, and I guess I took it. Some people thought I was a little young for it. I guess I was the youngest manager in South Dakota at that okay. time, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, no, we got along very good. Had good years up here. Uh uh, when we started, you know, uh, well, I think my salary, you know, was probably four hundred, four hundred twenty-five dollars a month, you know, back in the '60s. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we thought that was pretty good money, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. so then went on for quite a few years. There I was here twenty-five years. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what sort of issues were the co- was the co-op dealing with in those days? Um, well. We had our good years and we had our bad years, you know. Okay, I guess. You're trying to get into the fertilizer business. Oh yeah, no, we never got into the fertilizer. The elevator okay. uh, had the fertilizer, mm-hmm. but shortly after I started, we got into the propane business, mm-hmm. and uh, that was very good for the co-op. I'll never forget, you know. In those times, we'd buy LP for probably six cents and sell it for twelve, and we thought we was making the best money maker we had, you know. <laughs> But then things were a lot cheaper at that yes, time, you know, yes. so. Dollars were different. So, and that's one of the issues, I don't know. And then through the process, we put on a, a new storage shed, and then in, for a few years, and then we tore down the old station and built a new station and uh, had a very nice display room, and things went good. Um... 
Did you have a chance to work with some interesting people? At, uh, well, the yeah. Board and uh, in the community. I was, uh, I was, uh, what would you call it? One of, uh, now I, I was on the advisory committee up at Cenex, up in mm-hmm. St. Paul. Okay. And I was on that one or two years. Mm-hmm. And we had meetings, you know, Seattle, we, yeah. And then a lot of them, you know, up in Minneapolis. So. Mm-hmm. Got to meet a lot of people there, and and then through the years, you know, with our showcases and all that, you know, yeah, we got to meet a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Were there some really good people on the board here? You talked about your board being good folks. Oh, we are, some of the folks? Well, the first ones that was on there when I started would have been Roy Clark and Leonard Ford and Ick Dragsett and Willard Demery. Oh, there was one more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what sort of a wor- working relationship did you have with the uh, with the regional back in those days? Very good. Yeah, we uh, went to a lot of meetings up there. We bought ninety nine percent of our stuff from the exchange. You know, mm-hmm. hardware, fuel, everything. So. Mm-hmm. Who were some of the field staff people you were dealing with? The one I always dealt with was uh, Clifford Beach, mm-hmm. Rodney Dodge, Al Wink, Ed Rennes, Al, and I've been trying to think of his last name, Al. I cannot remember his last name. And then, you know, they'd come and go different ones. I guess I don't remember them all, but mm-hmm. Clifford Beach was our main, you know. And uh, yeah. Fred Gilbury was our yeah. main auditor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was our auditor at Farmers Union, too. Yeah. Um, how many employees did you have in the co-op at that time? Well, in the summer we'd run... In the winter time, we'd probably be down to about five. I had the secretary, mm-hmm. and there'd probably be three others with the propane and the and five to six. Mm-hmm. One on propane, one on uh, fuel, bookkeeper, and one in the hardware, and myself, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and one in the shop. Yep. Yeah, yeah. What kind of volume were you doing back in those days as far as business? I was thinking. I think when I started out, our volume was probably around. Four hundred thousand dollars in nineteen sixty-three. Mm-hmm. I guess when I left in in eighty-five, I think it was around the two million dollar mark mm-hmm. somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Might have been a little more than that. Mm-hmm. A little bit of inflation went on. Oh yeah, years. yeah, yeah. And we did gain mm-hmm. more customers. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Did you have any uh, particular uh, approach or philosophy for dealing with the people you were, were working for you? Well, I guess. With the people that worked for me, yeah, I had some good people, you know, that worked for me, and I had some bad ones, mm-hmm. you know. We didn't keep the bad ones. I remember one of them got took off and and uh, took my the company checkbook, and he forged my name Ooh. on the back of about five checks, and he got them all cashed. And uh, of course, he left, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'll never forget. Uh, Deputy Sheriff at that time, he comes up, he says they caught him, and they caught him down New Orleans. Oh. So this, I think this was on a Tuesday, and and the deputy says, uh, Gene, he says, uh, you better get your bags packed. He says, uh, we're on our way uh, Friday morning. Where? You know, I said, New Orleans caught s- s- this person. Yeah. I says, I ain't going. Well, he says, you are going. He says, I'll subpoena you. You know, you got to go. <laughs> so the way, we, go the way we did, we took off for New Orleans and got him. And so he spent some time in the pen. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um... What kind of, was there, were there, were there uh, difficult issues for co-ops in, in, during those years too? The later years, there was big difference. I mean, you know, back in the later 80s, or early 80s, boy, the farming really got tough, you know. Yeah. And yeah, uh, the there's situation. quite a few farmers that didn't make it, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was hard on accounts receivable too, you know. It's, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The co-ops were struggling, you know, a lot of them at that time. Yep.
Um, there's always a, kind of a, a pressure uh, to combine. Was there any of that around here to maybe merge with the neighboring co-op? It was getting that way there when, you know, they tried to get... There was talk of it, I guess I mm -hmm. should say, but shortly after, you know, it wasn't very many years after I left, then they were starting to close up some of the smaller ones, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, went bigger, you know. That's yeah. the way things go. Yeah. What's the... Uh what did that, did that have an impact on people's attitude toward cooperatives around here, uh, losing their co-op? Oh yeah, yeah. Because when we lost it, there, when done, I, you know, we really didn't. We was financially pretty well off, you know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. yeah, it it did have some impact. You bet. There was farmers that weren't very happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did they? Did people get their get money back, or did? They? Oh yeah, yeah. What it it took it, it took a few years, yeah. but they uh, they uh, we got all they got all the stock back. Mm -hmm. They kept the same board of board of directors on, you know, for probably probably took ten years. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they'd meet once a year or do whatever, and then they'd pay out. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming back from Senex, you know, the exchange mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. Did, was there any discussion at that time of maybe combining the facility here with uh, uh, with maybe another co-op and keeping it in business? Or I don't think so. No, I don't think so. They just uh, they decided when they decided they had an auction sale and they well yeah we had like F and M down here in Madison you mm -hmm. know was got a pretty big uh, yeah yeah they did yeah. they're doing a good job down there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Flandreau and some of those over to the east Flandreau. Yeah, and Elkton's still going, you know, but Oldham, they closed, yeah. you know. Yeah, Lake Preston. Lake Preston, Reedy Howard, too, you know, yeah. that there, uh, Fedora. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Okay. Do you, uh, do you think cooperatives today are still playing a, a role? Of, we had a speaker at last fall at the... Uh, Co-op month banquet who described co-ops as market correcting tools. Uh, do you think they still f perform a, that function? Of, oh, I think of they do. And the other companies uh, honest, so to speak. Oh, I I think they do. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really do. Mm -hmm. How how important do you feel like cooperative education is? Do you think maybe there's with with is that an issue that has been neglected, or is it an issue that well, there's been enough of? Or I guess I can remember, you know, they used to have these farmers' union days or schools, you know, mm -hmm. that they get the young kids in, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they always around here, you know, have a fairly good crowd for it, and that's teaching the young kids, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't know if they have them anymore or not. Yeah, we do. You do. Okay, all right. Um... Mm -hmm. Do you think today's, uh, do you think there's enough cooperation between cooperatives? You know, we talked about all of them in the same family around here. Did they work together at all, or did they tend to feel that they were competitors? Boy, that's a tough question. <laughs> you know, because, I don't know, you know, like, in the fertilizer and stuff, you know, they all, each co-op, you know, is handling fertilizer and, you know, one farmer isn't happy with one, they'll go to the other or mm -hmm. vice versa to a, mm -hmm. you know, there's always going to be, I think, a little competition between them. I really do. Because they're all, all trying to, you know, do their job. Mm -hmm. What about other other co-ops? You had a, an elevator here in town. Was that a co-op too? That was, yeah. Oh. That was closed. Mm -hmm. uh, that was bought out by the Madison Farmers Elevator. Okay, so it's kind of a branch of. Is it still in business? No, no. They sold it. Couple farmers own it now. So. Okay, I, I noticed it was still look like it was being used. Yeah, on yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So people do end up having to drive a little bit further for some of the services that used to be in the community. Oh right, yeah. They've got to go to. Mostly either Brookings or Madison's the main one, I think, around here, and then in Brookings, you know. Yep. Do you uh, think today's co-op members know enough about the history of their own organizations? Uh, oh, I think probably a lot of the younger ones don't, you know, because mm -hmm. yeah. 
the farmers that are out in the world today, you know, farming, they're getting pretty good size, you know, and they, mm -hmm. they're busy, yeah. most of them, you know. Yeah. Um. How about cooperative loyalty? Uh, is that still a factor in farmers' decisions, or is that kind of gone? Boy, you know, there's some of the farmers, a lot of them anymore, they're going to go where the cheapest price is. I've seen that, you know, just mm -hmm. in the last, till I retired, you know. Yeah. And, they, uh, and there's some that absolutely, you know, they're going to buy mm -hmm. from the co-op regardless. But, boy, there's some that ain't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How about uh, some of the newer cooperatives around here, like the uh, like the uh, ethanol co-ops or the the uh, soybean? Uh, I think up at Volga, are there farmers around here that are participating? In oh, that? there's a lot of farmers that are doing that, and I think that's a very good deal. You know, the Wentworth ethanol plants have done very good. Mm -hmm. They've been farmers have been getting great, you know, dividends out of there. Mm -hmm. Soybean plant. They've been struggling a little in Vogue, I guess, but now they're going to pay dividend too, so they've had a decent year, from what I hear. Yeah, you know, they they have had some good years. Oh, sure, sure, past, you bet. So. How do you feel about the ethanol business? Do you think that's? Uh... I think the ethanol business is good for our community. I mean, it's mm -hmm. you can see how it's driving up our corn price. Yep. But then that's driving up everything else, you know, cash rent. So the livestock so producers are livestock, the it's the tough, tough on, well, yeah. yeah. But maybe some of those guys are also making money in the Oh, sure, sure, yeah. In, in ethanol, too. Um, yeah. Do you think the regional cooperatives participated enough in getting ethanol started that they maybe missed the boat a little bit, do you think? Uh, you know, I guess I haven't really followed it that close. Okay. I would think that Senex would be in on that pretty strong, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Some of the local co-ops now are putting in so-called blender pumps that, uh, where you can pick the percentage of ethanol you want. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got that down here in Madison, you know. Do you now? Uh, okay. F&M has got like the 85. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and then, well, 85 and then the, the ethanol. The 10%. 10% and then the... The regular, you know, just yeah, regular. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but so. Watertown in Britain now they have a where you can also select twenty percent and thirty percent. Oh no no no! I don't think we got that. Mm -hmm. And they put it all in one pump, so you press a button for the oh, blend okay. you want. No, I not that I know of. I haven't used it anyway out there. Okay. Okay. okay um, and then let's see. I'm going to skip over a couple of questions here because I think we discussed that. Uh, challenges uh, facing organizations and cooperatives both have changed over the years. What seems like the biggest change to you as you look at maybe cooperatives and and farming today as opposed to uh, when you were managing in the in the sixties and seventies and early eighties? Well, I think one thing you know, like I said, the the farming is getting so big, you know, and mm -hmm. where we used to just go out and sell a farmer, now there's a lot of these farmers, you know, they want. A bid on their stuff, you know, and a lot of them are getting, they want to bid for the whole works for the whole year, you know, so, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the main, you know, deals when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. Does it seem like maybe there's a, for, for a cooperative, there's maybe more danger in, in, the, in, in the tendency to perhaps extend credit? too long to a big operator as opposed to small operators? Well, that's always a risk, I guess, yeah. And then another thing, you know, I've always thought, you know, one person really isn't any better than the other. We need the small farmers, too. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's getting so it isn't that way anymore. You know, if you're going to be in the business, you know, the one that'll farm 30 quarters, you know, they mm -hmm. buy a lot more product. And, and I guess that's the way it goes, but... Mm -hmm. We used to be good when we had two, three farmers on every section of ground. That was always my theory. Uh -huh. uh, more people around. Than right, right. Well, you can tell that in our churches and everything else, you know. Um, when did you retire then? I just retired now at the end of December 31st. Okay. But when, after you left the co-op, what were you doing then? Then I went as, in on sales with Tara. In fertilizer and chemical, okay. and I was in that for, 
you know, quite a few years. And then F&M, the, uh, when Terra sold out, the co-ops bought them. Yeah. AgriSolutions. And then, uh, then F&M, Senex and Madison, they bought our plant. Mm-hmm. So the last 10 years or so, I've... Well, I was 99. 1999's when F and M bought it out. So I worked for, got back into Senex again, and yeah. been with them for till I retired now. Mm-hmm. And I'll go back and drive a truck in the spring or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that you're retired, what are you thinking about doing with your time? Well, if you've seen our lawn here, we got plenty of big lawn and rock gardens, and uh-huh. but I a lot of stuff oh, out there right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. No, I. Oh, I got plenty of stuff I can do, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I do want to go down and, you know, help them out. Sure. Spring and fall and sure. winter months. It's kind of nice to, I guess, to be mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. Are you involved in uh, some other stuff around the community here? Uh, yeah, I'm on the town town board. Okay. I've been on the town board for probably 30 40 years, I don't know, it's been a long time. Yeah, how big is Nunda now? Well, that's around 45 is all, 45, 50. Mm-hmm. What is that, how does that compare with, say, in 1963 when you started? Oh, I would say we probably had close to 100 people, mm-hmm. you know, had a lot more kids, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Was there a school hmm. here? No, but all our kids, there was... Jeff, my oldest boy, went about six months here in London to a grade school, and yeah. they closed that, and then it's been Rutland ever since. So mm-hmm. uh, that's where all the schools are. Yeah, yeah. where is Rutland from here? Rutland's about seven miles southwest of here, southeast, mm-hmm. southeast. Mm-hmm. So, and Rutland's very small too, but they've mm-hmm. got a very good school. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. how many kids are there now? I think it's around 120, somewhere okay. in there, 100. So they were, they were really jeopardized. By oh, the, yeah. The, the first version of the right. consolidation right. of the here. Yep. Where would they have merged to if they... You know, I don't know. I would imagine some would go to Madison. Mm-hmm. Some probably Coleman, mm-hmm. Boga. Yeah. I would imagine, you know. Yep, yep. I guess we've been talking about it, but how how has the community changed over the years? Is there uh, is there still a sen- same sense of community in these smaller towns as there once was? We we've got a very active fire department, and I'm on that. You know, and uh, as far as in our you know we've got a lot of activities going on around here. Mm-hmm. Our church is very active. Yep. You know, and uh, you have a business or two left in town. Yeah, we got uh, we got the bar and grill, yep. and then the post office and the Legion, mm-hmm. and then of course the fire department. And it's really dwindled, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Used to have a very active back in the '60s, good lumber yard, Great mm-hmm. Plains lumber yard. Yep, that closed later on in years. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that was a subsidiary of. Uh GTA. Right. Yep. Uh, are you, uh, as you look to the future, are you optimistic or pessimistic? Or a combination of both? Probably a combination of both. I'm optimistic, you know. Yeah. I think things will work out, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right now, you know, the economy right now, if it wasn't for that Iraq deal and all them problems, you know, the it isn't too bad, you know. Mm-hmm. The prices are up now, yep, yep. but then everything else is too. So it takes more, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Farmers seem to have a, uh, at least for the time being, if, if they're in, in the grain business, at least they seem to have a positive attitude because oh yeah, prices yeah, prices being higher than they oh, have sure. for a long time proportionally. Yeah, right. You always have to have to be careful to tell a farmer that prices are high. He'll, oh, I know. Basically, it. they're higher than they were, but they're yeah. Not high. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Boy, I don't know. Uh, anything I didn't ask you about that you'd like to comment on? I never quite know what I'm going to get when I ask people that. But uh, anything we I'll probably discuss? think of stuff later, but I, yeah, I don't know. We got.
I really don't know. Okay. You got me stumped okay. here. Well, if something else comes to mind before I leave, why well, um, I've uh, in fact I've actually done did an addendum over the telephone <laughs> with a guy. Yeah. And remembered something a month after I. Oh sure. Meeting. Man, I know there could be, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, okay, well, we have been visiting with Gene Dragseth. Thank you for participating in the Cooperative Legacy Project.